is Chagulani Center Mall. For the record, Bobby Wine is just a nickname. Many times I go back to the time when I adapted the name Bobby Wine. Because Bobby comes from Robert. Robert is my Christian name. I honestly up to now don't know what Robert means, but that's my name. And uh, it changed from Robert to Bob. Well, I knew that Bob and Robert were the same, but Bob was fancier. Because when I was growing up, after learning that Robert means Bob, I chose Bob because Bob and it was Robert as well. Uh, that name I got from my mother. I was named in 1982 when I was born after one then great African revolutionary called Robert Mogabe. Yeah. Uh, when I was at school, when I was at school studying music, it was more or less a culture for everybody to have a nickname. And because Bob was fancier than Robert, and uh, Bobby was even more fancier than Bob, because Bobby Brown was a fancy artist then. Uh, I opted for Bobby. I only added the wine because I believed that I was getting better with age, and therefore I ended up being a I still, I still feel the regret because if I knew that I would grow up to be a proud African, I would probably choose a nickname that sounds more African. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my first time to come to Nigeria. always been in Nigeria. My thoughts and beliefs and indeed confidence has been in a great way shaped by what I learned from Nigeria. Um, I grew up reading books from the great Chino Achebe, from the great Alicia Mani, but most importantly from Professor Wallace Oinka. And not only me, ladies and gentlemen, but my generation in Uganda and in East Africa has been shaped by the confidence and vibe that we get from Nigeria. You guys should clap for yourselves. Nigerians have always given us confidence. They, according to me, are the most confident Africans. So And if I was speaking to you back in the day before these borders were driven, were drawn in our beautiful continent, I would be confident enough to claim that I'm a Nigerian too. And that said, ladies and gentlemen, I could not be prouder for the reason that brings me to Nigeria. We are here to celebrate the life and times of a great African son. Fela Koti. And ladies and gentlemen, I probably would have come to Nigeria as an artist or as an activist for any other reason, but to see that we are here to celebrate a man that touched me personally and I believe touched thousands if not millions of Africans is a great thing. Fela Koti was not known to me in my initial time. Like any other African youth delving into art, yeah, I was greatly inspired by the South African music, especially in the times before South Africa was finally free. Those travel songs of uh, uh, Chico, of uh, Yvonne Chaka Chaka, of Black Edube, and all those revolutionary artists. But there's this one other guy from Nigeria that I got to learn about 
differently. For starters, I come from the ghetto. I come from the biggest slum in Kampala, Uganda, called Kamocha. Although I had the rare opportunity, unlike many of the people that I grew up with, to go to school and get a basic education, I was another common artist. And indeed, when I became an artist, like many other artists, my desire was to sing about the fancy things. So my music started out as, you know, building ghetto confidence. This ghetto is bigger than that ghetto. Oh, we're stronger. We can win that group in a fight. Oh, we are singing about the booty of the girls and we're singing about the parties and so on and so forth. And as we grew up, we noticed, or I personally noticed, that indeed we were teachers, we were influencers. I noticed that so many young men and women were influenced in fancy life, into alcohol, into hard drugs, and many other things. It was influenced. It came to a time when corporate companies were indeed paying us to just pause with their drinks because that is the kind of influence we had with the youth. If I post with the Guinness or with the Nile special beer, the company would be sure that the generation is going to, you know, uh, consume that. And that was the case. We were teachers, very busy teaching our generation nonsense. Like I said, it's either by mistake or deliberate that artists or activists that tend to teach what is not beneficial for the status quo are not promoted. I did not learn about Fela Kuti from mainstream media. I never watched any of his videos on national TV and I never heard his music on national radio. It is just a friend that told me about Fela Kuti and when I went on researching about him, it blew my mind, ladies and gentlemen. So, 10 years ago, I personally took a decision to change the genre of my music from entertainment to edutainment. We call, it, we call it edutainment, one, because music was a very influential and effective mode of, of communication. But most importantly, we knew that that was the easiest way to send messages to those people that one did not get the rare opportunity of going to school and even those that went to school ladies and gentlemen i don't know how it is here but back home and in many parts of africa that i've gone to education is not a very entertaining thing and many young men and women are actually forced to learn the things they learn at school so when i changed my music initially it was talking about uh, the social issues, the poverty, the behavior change, um, uh, guiding uh, fellow youth against uh, the HIV AIDS epidemic, and it's slowly by slowly that I found the need to talk about leadership. And again, coming back to Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, there's one interview that I read when the great Chino Achebe was asked what the problem of Nigeria was back in the 80s. He said, the problem of Nigeria are not the people, it's not the lakes and rivers, it's not the weather, it is the leadership. It got into me and I probed deeper into the leadership that we were having. And indeed, that question was alive and uncomfortable, that the answer was alive and it continues to be alive where I come from in particular in Uganda the leadership. So we started talking about the leadership and challenging the leadership, talking about things that matter. I've been discussing with many of my friends back home and in it here that Fela is a man that lived before his time. I wish we had a Fela today or many other Felas today. Because this is a guy that lived when there was no social media, when there was no internet. In a time when it was very, very, very easy to silence a strong critical voice like Fela. 
Only God knows the beatings that he took, how many times he was incarcerated, but ultimately he stood and spoke of what he believed in. So today here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Personally, after taking that decision of stopping to teach nonsense and being able to teach some sense whenever I could, as expected, um, in our time, with the benefits of uh, internet, social media, and the big youth bulge that we have in Africa, there was wide communication. We benefited from that. Needless to say, the powers that be were not asleep to that. As I speak now, um, there's been so many benefits to me and those that think like me having emulated fair. But yes, many, many disadvantages as well. Uh, as we speak today, my music is banned in my country. My concerts are abolished in my country. And yes, my public appearances are abolished in my country. We cannot meet, I cannot be able to address people in my own country as I'm doing here. Why? Because I'm an artist that is using music to communicate to the brains of the people. It was a statement from the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoe Kabota Museveni, who has been in power for 34 years, that I should not mix politics with music. But interestingly, we have a president that, as we speak, is in studio right now recording an album. <laughs> Why? Because it has been realized that music is the most powerful means of communication. In 2016, I was offered 500 million shillings, that's $200,000 to join a big list of artists that were seeking praises for the president. Now, that money is not given to professors. That money is not given to any high-ranking person in our country. Why? Because much as they have the degrees, more degrees than a thermometer, <laughs> much as they have the perceived credibility, the regime knows that indeed it is art and music that has that power to communicate. So coming back to the theme, teacher don't teach me nonsense. You realize that yes, sometimes it's out of fear, sometimes it's out of ignorance, and many times it's deliberate for us as teachers to be teaching nonsense. However, it's important for not just the artists from other parts of Africa, but even in Nigeria today, to make sure they are not teachers continuously teaching nonsense. We know that our people listen to us. We know that as artists, we are listened to by very, very many people. People listen to us, some of them, actually most of them pay to listen to us. That's a big, big blessing. It has been why they say that we as Africans have not embraced the culture of reading to the levels we should. We have been ridiculed so many times, but again, nobody can say that African art has not been effective enough. So it is my hope and desire that we, the would-be fellows of this generation, continue the belief that the great fellow put in hand. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, celebrating a man that gave up on personal aggrandizement. We are celebrating a man who we know did not use his music to only you know, sing about parties, to sing about the good things that were happening, but to criticize those that hold the power on our behalf. And yes, um, 
learning from the great Professor Wole Soinka, who one time said that the greatest threat to freedom is failure to criticize. I want to um, request on this platform my fellow artists, particularly the artists, to remember that they have an, an uncomparable power in their hands, in their mouth, to send out messages out there, to continue with the cause that was started by our fathers, by our inspirations, uh, people like Fela Kuti, people like Bob Marley, and many other people. But most importantly, a man called Fela Kuti, who did not miss his words, we know that it's challenging to question the status quo. And we know that it's very rewarding to hope no with the status quo. But again, for those among us who doubt whether or not it's possible, we have an example. An example that lived in the same space that we're living in today. And his name was Fela and Nicola Paul Kuti. So while we celebrate him, we celebrate him may we tap into his braveness. May his spirit, which as an African man, I believe is still alive among us today. May all of us go back to our destination with at least a little bit of fellow Kuti. And I believe that if that spirit doesn't die, then many, many more fellas will be born in this generation and after all.